Yo guys, welcome to the Zelda Fiction. Today we are gonna see, what if Naruto got harem with Femgara, Femhaku and Fu. Part 1. Huge shout out to Ace9607 for this story. If you end up liking this video, please consider subscribe, so without further ado, let's get into the video. All was peaceful in the village of Kanahagakur. The sun was beginning to set over the greatest of all the hidden ninja villages, and a festival was currently taking place in its center. Today is October 10th, the day the QB no Kitsune, mightiest of all of the tailed beasts, attacked this village. It was an event that claimed the lives of several thousands of lives, both ninja and civilian. A story goes that the fourth Hokage was able to kill the beast by sacrificing his own life, but then again, those are only stories to appease the young and ignorant population of the village. He really sealed the beast into a newborn infant, since the tailed beasts are immortal, due to being nothing more than conscious masses of chakra. Only a newborn that has not developed their chakra system can integrate the beast's yaki with their chakra. The unlucky child he used was none other than his own son, Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. He wished for the villagers to see him as a hero for holding the beast at bay, but he was sadly mistaken if he thought that would be the case. It has been 10 years since that traumatic event, and little Naruto is currently running as fast as his small eggs can carry him. It's been like this ever since I can remember. Every year on my birthday, they mob up and beat me for no good reason. Why does everyone hate me? He thought with tears in his eyes. Even though he was in the ninja academy now, he couldn't even beat a group of civilians. But that was no his fault. No, that was due to both the instructors teaching him wrong information and only being able to afford Raymond on his pathetic allowance given to him by the third Hokage. This of course led to his malnourished body and ignorance toward certain subjects. Back with Naruto, the mob had finally cornered him from all four sides at an intersection of the streets. He went into a fetal position and awaited the inevitable pain that was to come. And then he felt it. They were stabbing at him with broken glass, hitting him as hard as they could, and even throwing the torches in their possession, burning both his skin and clothes. He simply lay there, taking in all of their hatred, not allowing any emotion to show on his face. He wouldn't give them the pleasure of knowing how much it really hurt him. Besides, he knew that they wouldn't kill him, otherwise they would have done so years ago. All he could think of is why they must hate him. Sure he had pulled a few well a ton of pranks around the village, but the abuse started long before that. The mob soon grew tired of beating him, so they dispersed, knowing if the third Hokage were to catch them, they would be sent to the T&I department to chat with Ibiki. Naruto gazed up at the night sky, slowly shedding a few tears, making a silent vow to prove that he was not the demon that they claimed him to be. His resolve was only strengthened by their hatred. Meanwhile in heaven, Kami watched as the boy was beaten and wondered how humanity had become so corrupt. He pitied the poor boy and believed that this was the night that his spirit had been broken. His sister, Fate, had told him so. But as he peered into the soul of the small boy, he could not believe that nothing had deterred him at all, but strengthened his resolve. This small child had, literally, defied the word of Fate herself. He had become intrigued with the boy's attitude years ago and sought to understand just how strong his will is. He now had his answer, and it was shocking to say the least. It would take no less than slaughtering everyone he cared for, as well as the worst psychological torture on the ninth level of hell to kill his spirit. He had never seen someone so remarkable since the Sage of Six Paths himself. He paused at that thought and decided in a split second that he could not allow someone so special get out of his grasp. The boy would be far too amusing to watch to allow him to die. So for the first time since the Great Sage, he would give a mortal his blessing. It would not be the same as the sage's blessings however. He decided that he would give Naruto the knowledge of many great ninja, as well as complete control over the entirety of the base and sub-elements. He would also correct any flaws on his body brought on by malnutrition. Yes Kami thought, this Naruto will be very entertaining to observe in the coming years. At least watching him will distract me from all this damn paperwork. He looked over at the large stacks of paper going all the way to the ceiling, contemplating the many millions of ways to destroy it. He rose from his desk and proceeded to walk over to the clouded edge of his window. He put his hands in front of him and sent out a mighty wind towards the ground, smirking as he thought of the many ways that the boy could easily abuse his powers, as well as the heart attacks from the civilian council when they learn of his new abilities. He also thought that the gates of hell would need to be widened quite a bit from the mass of corrupted souls the boy was sure to send there. Naruto continued to look towards the sky, still unable to move from the vicious beating he had gotten earlier. All of a sudden, he heard the wind begin to pick up. And then it got louder, then louder, then even louder. Soon enough, the wind around Naruto picked up so much that a miniature tornado surrounded his body. He began to freak out for a moment, but that quickly faded as he lost consciousness. Naruto appeared in a dark sower-like place and wondered how in the world he had gotten there. He began walking and walking and walking. He was getting tired of having no idea of where he was going fast. 
all of a sudden, a loud thundering roar could be heard on the other side of the door he was in front of. Now Naruto was no idiot, contrary to popular belief, he just had no one to teach him to do things properly. But since he had nowhere else to go, seeing as the lights went out in every other hallway he could take, he had no choice but to take his chances with whatever he found in there. He slowly opened the door and stepped inside. Though he immediately regretted it, seeing as how the door slammed shut behind him. He stared straight ahead into a single giant red eye. Well, it looks like my jailer has come to pay me a visit. I'm touched to see that you care so much about me. Said a loud and slightly sarcastic voice. Who are you? What the hell am I doing here? What do you want from me? Naruto asked in a scared and loud voice. Easy kid, don't hyperventilate on me here. If you die, then I die, and I won't allow that to happen. To answer your questions, I am the QB, and you are in your mindscape right now. Wait, the QB. What the hell are you doing here? I thought that the fourth Hokage killed you ten years ago. I'm afraid that what you have been told is a lie. The legendary tailed beasts cannot be killed. We are nothing more than sentient masses of gathered yaki, so we will simply reform later if defeated. No, on the day that I fought who you call the fourth Hokage, he sealed me within you, his son. Naruto was in shock. Not only did he just learn that he contained the most powerful creature in existence, but the fourth freaking Hokage was his father. As for why you are her now, is beyond what even I thought was possible. It seems as though Kami has taken a particular interest in you. Why? I have absolutely no clue, but you have got to be the luckiest son of a bai I have ever seen in my thousands of years in existence. What are you talking about? Nothing you're saying makes any sense. Why would Kami even consider me? Like I was saying before Brad, I have no idea. But Kami has decided to bless you. You are the first mortal who has received this since the Sage of Six Paths. Kami has given you the ability over all elements, without the use of hand signs, as well as a stronger body, and the knowledge of some of the greatest ninja in history, including the Sage himself. Look inside of yourself. Concentrate on finding the information, and you will see everything clearly. Naruto, being completely stupefied at all of this new information, simply nodded and began to concentrate. In just a few minutes, a sudden rush of new knowledge rushed into his mind, nearly overwhelming him. He learned of many different things, from ninja training, to civilian work, and even into proper etiquette. After what seemed like hours, he finally came out of his stupor. After everything that he had learned, there were only a few things that he could say. What the hell kind of idiot have I been? Wearing an orange jumpsuit that practically screams I'm over here, come kill me. And why in the world would I ever like Sakura? She does nothing but abuse me and screams about how great Sasuke is. I was a complete moron. The QB was quite amused at how quickly the little boy's attitude had changed. But then again, hundreds of years' worth of knowledge would do that to anyone. He watched as the boy began to settle down after his little rant of how stupid he was. So kid, what are you going to do now that you have the potential to kick nearly anyone's asses? The blonde seemed to think about it for a moment, something he had never done previously, and suddenly looked at the beast with a very mischievous fox-like grin, something that even made the QB proud of the little brat. I think it's time for me to step up my physical training first, and then I can put my plans into action. I'm still pretty weak in terms of strength, and I need experience with controlling the elements. Plus, I still should learn a few non-elemental jutsu just in case. I remember something called the Shadow Clone Jutsu. The caster retains the memory of all of the clones after they disperse. There was also some other interesting applications that it could be used for, especially that explosion technique anyway, I could practice faster that way and get my abysmal chakra control up to Kage level before I graduate from the academy. That's one good thing about having you here QB, I will almost never run out of chakra, so I can make thousands of clones. The world around him seemed to shift and fade. Naruto was looking at QB, knowing that he was regaining consciousness. Looks like it's time for you to go now kid. Since you've visited here, I was able to open a mental link between us so I can communicate with you while you aren't here. And by the way, my name isn't QB, it's Karama. The inner world faded around Naruto. He knew that when he awakened, things would never be the same for him again. The sun slowly rose above the now silent city of Konoha, with only ninja and business owners even beginning to stir. Naruto slowly awakened to the side of a familiar hospital bed and marked down a mental note of his 203rd visit here. He looked up to see the concerned eyes of the third Hokage, or as he called him, old man. Now that Naruto had this overwhelming amount of knowledge, he shuddered to think of what a less kind person of his status could have done to him. He could have been publicly executed several times over. This only served to make Naruto even more determined to change his once foolish ways. Hello, Naruto-kun. How are you feeling now that you are up? Asked a concerned looking old man. I've been better Jiji. I've also been through worse though, so I'm not as bad as I could be. Naruto claimed with his usual foxy smile. 
He had decided that he should probably hide his true abilities until he could use them properly. He wouldn't need a teacher, seeing as all of the information, including pointers on how to improve the techniques, were already inside of his head. It wasn't like he didn't trust the old man, but he would most likely tell the council, who would just make his life even more hellish than what it already was. If that was even possible, which he doubted. They would most likely want to make him a breeding factory and then kill him after his genes are passed on. Naruto was not by any means shallow and respected women just as much as he did men. He knew that the women they choose wouldn't have any choice in the matter either. I'm sorry Naruto-kun, I had hoped that this wouldn't happen again. I'll try to increase the Anbu patrols around that part of the neighborhood, but with the council breathing down my neck, I'm afraid that's all I can do. Naruto could tell that the old man really did regret how powerless he was in this situation. It's too bad that he forgot that this was a military dictatorship and that his word was the law. But no one had taken him seriously due to his old age and the fact that he had gotten soft over the years. An Anbu in a cat's mask appeared next to the man and whispered something into his ear so that only he could hear it, then left as quickly as they came. Okay, thank you for bringing this to my attention Nico. Naruto, do you remember anything about the area you were in before you were chased away? It could help me put together what could have possibly set them off this time. He said in a slightly worried voice. Naruto, not being the fool any longer, knew that the third was trying to act like he didn't know why they attacked him. The old man had no idea just how much he knew about himself, some things that if said, could possibly put the poor man into cardiac arrest. I was around the Achiha district. When the guard saw me walking past, they wouldn't let me through that part of town. I wanted to take a shortcut down a different alleyway, but that probably wasn't my best idea after my track record of hospital visits. The old man flinched slightly when he said that and sighed. Flashback well, every good story that is lengthy needs to have at least a few. Naruto was currently arguing with the guards about why he shouldn't go through this district. Of course, he was losing badly since he was a 10-year-old academy student against two chunin twice his age. For the last time, you shall not be permitted into this district brat. Learn your place, or I, as in Ichiha will not be so merciful. He activated his Sharingan to add emphasis to his point. What he failed to take into account was the person he was talking to was a 10-year-old, therefore much too stubborn to back down so easily. I don't care who the hell you are. Now let me pass already Ichiha team. This was the last straw for the irritated Chunin, so he reached into his pack and grabbed a kunai. He began to chase the boy down the street, which being who Naruto is, gained attention quickly. Some simply ignored his cries for help, while others also began to chase him as well. The sun was beginning to set, and a full-blown mob was formed by then. And that was when he was cornered. Flashback end review to let me know how I did on the flashback. The third seemed to absorb the information that Naruto had told him with a grim expression. I will find whoever did this by looking into the Chunin Gate duty logs. Weasel should be back from his two-month mission to continue watching over you in a few days. I've already sent an excuse to the academy as to why you will not be there yesterday. This was something that Naruto was looking forward to. Over the years, the only two Anbu assigned to protect him that would actually do their jobs were Nico and Weasel. In fact, Weasel would even do his shopping for him so he would not be kicked out or overcharged. He had come to see him as an older brother type figure, as he was also the only one who ever gave him birthday presents, besides the Hokage and some mysterious person that always leaves them on his doorstep. The two of them had undeniably become very close. So much so, he knew his identity as Itachi and still liked him just as much, if not more than the old man. On a side note, the Ichiha massacre happened just two weeks after Itachi arrived back. He only left the five babies, four of the women including his mother and his little brother Sasuke alive. Ever since then, Sasuke had been brooding much more and never even spoke to anyone unless he was trying to say how much better than them he was. After saying some farewells, Naruto was discharged from the hospital while the third Hokage had important duties to attend to. That thought almost made him scowl. Damn paperwork. I wonder if everyone with significant power has to put up with its tyranny. Meanwhile, all across the elemental nations, heaven and hell, important figures from the various Kage to even the recently active Akatsuki, as well as the different Kami to the ruler of Maki, one, sneezed simultaneously. This caused both the demon lord and Kami to have their papers scatter around the room. I'm gonna find whoever was talking about me and make their afterlife miserable they both thought at the same time. Naruto was on his way to the academy when a thought suddenly popped into his head. Why don't I just send a shadow clone there? I know how to use them, so I can just pump more chakra into a single clone, so even the Hyuga girl that follows me won't be able to tell. And I could set up a barrier around the area that my clones and I are training at so even the old man's crystal ball can't be used to spy on me. With his mind made up, he set out to do just that. 
The shadow clone, as predicted, had fooled everyone into thinking it was the real him, while he set up the barrier around a currently unused training ground. He repeated this process for several months, with around 300 clones working on chakra control, 100 on basic tojutsu katas, 200 on his elemental manipulation, and another 100 on various EC rank ninjutsu, while the real Naruto was increasing his physical training by using weighted seals around his body at about 100 pounds altogether. At the six-month mark, he changed up the schedule to 500 clones on control, due to his ever-increasing reserves, 200 on his more advanced basic elemental manipulation, 250 on the more advanced jutsu forms, and the last 250 on seer rank ninjutsu. He also increased the weight several times during the months, now wearing around 500 pounds total, and increased his physical workout to 9 hours a day. At this time, he would gauge his overall skill to that of a mid -jounin. He could just imagine the looks on the council's faces when he revealed his true power and abilities. True, they would immediately try to force him into the craw, which was why he was hiding it in the first place, but he had found a loophole around going through that. He simply needed to be the head of a clan already established, as well as married before he turned 16. If he did that, then not only would they not be able to force him in, he could still take additional wives if he wished to do so. Whether he did that or not was to be the decision of both his first wife and the other woman involved. He wasn't a pig that would force others into a loveless marriage. But the first year of training done, he was satisfied with his progress. But he realized that he now only had one year before he became a genin. He decided to upgrade his training even further, seeing as how he now had enough chakra to create and sustain around 5,000 clones. So with 1,000 on control, 1,000 on the sub-elements, 2,000 on combining all the different tojutsu styles into one that suited him, 500 on AS rank ninjutsu and the last 500 on kinjutsu, he continued his training like this for an entire year. By the end of this, his weights were at 5,000 pounds, and his overall ability would make the kage of the five great ninja villages shit themselves. He was the most powerful shinobi in all of the elemental nations. He had no idea why he was gifted by Kami the way he was, but he sure as hell wasn't going to complain. He was currently on his way to the academy for his genin test. He wondered why the hell the standards of the Leaf Village were so crappy compared to everyone else in the elemental nations. Seriously, were they trying to kill their genin by only teaching them the three most basic jutsu and a tojutsu stance that had openings a well-educated three-year-old Kumo resident could break through? Anyway, when he arrived, he found that he was the first one in the class. This was truthfully the first time he had even set foot into the academy personally in two years. He hated the moron persona that his clone was forced to wear, but at least he was no longer frowning all over Sakura anymore. He will never forget the looks on everyone's faces the day he had awakened. Flashback two years ago. The clone had walked into the room ready to carry out its creator's orders. He was to act like an idiot that his master used to be, but with one minor adjustment. He was no longer going to put up with the crap given to him on a daily basis by Sakura. As the students were filing through the door, the clone couldn't help but look on impassively at the weakness that was fangirls. They were a breed that had recently multiplied in Kanoha, mainly due to being the sons and daughters of council members. The parents of the girls would pressure them into marrying into a prominent clan. Hasten Point was the breedy emo that was Saz Keichiha, which he still hated with every fiber of his being. He could never understand how he was hailed as such a genius when his brother Itachi was already a chunin by his age. Naruto heard a loud rumbling coming from down the hallway, which he already knew what it was caused by. Wham! The door slammed open to reveal two girls his age fighting to get through the door first. Move it no pig. I was here first, so I get to sit down next to Sasuke Kun. Screeched out the loud annoyance known as Sakura Haruno. No I was first forehead. So move your fass out of my way. Was the voice of the slightly less irritating Ino Yamanaka. As the two resumed their bickering, he couldn't help but wonder if Sakura was somehow related to those banshee creatures he learned of from the information influx. He also believed that Inoichi, Ino's father, must be disappointed in how far their blood is degraded to create a fangirl like her. They quickly made their way to Naruto's seat, since Sasuke always sits beside of him for some reason. To this day, Naruto believes that it was because he wanted to get away from his ever-growing fan club. Move out of my way Naruto Baka. Sasuke-kun obviously wants to be beside of me said the ever-ignorant pink shrieking monkey. She went to punch his head with pitiful speeds, but he easily grabbed it. Clone Naruto threw her back into a seat in the row opposite of himself, gaining baffled looks from the rest of the class. I'm not going to say this again Haruno, so pay attention. I will no longer be your personal punching bag, nor will I frown all over you anymore. I don't like you now, and I'm still trying to figure out why I did in the first place. All you have ever done is hit and berate me on every occasion, so why the hell would I like you? So get this through that giant but empty forehead of yours. I hate. 
your guts got it memorized too. To say that everyone was shocked was an understatement. Even the teacher who had just walked through the door was too shocked to say anything. Here was the class dead last who never gave up at anything not only giving up on Sakura, but telling her off in the process. Well class, take your seats. It's time to start class. Still shell-shocked, Sakura silently took a seat next to Ino without complaint. Over the rest of the time in class, he raised his grades up to third in the class. He didn't want people to think that he was weak anymore, but also not know just how strong he really was. For the rest of the next two years, she left Naruto alone, afraid that he might retaliate now. While a certain lavender-haired Hyuga couldn't be happier there were no longer any rivals for her love's affection. Flashback end. Everyone was now in the class prepared to show that they had what it takes to become ninja. The test began with a long-range accuracy test. As everyone went up, the scores varied with the clan heirs scoring higher than the common civilians. Sasuke scored an impressive 90% accuracy at the 30-yard line. Ah, beat that dope. Said our favorite neighborhood emo man. Naruto stepped up to the 50-yard line with five shuriken in one hand and five kunai in the other. He threw them at the same time, and each one hit the direct center of their targets. Everyone was standing there with their mouth agape, not believing what they just saw. Very good Naruto. Exclaimed the dolphin-like teacher. Some of the fangirls were screeching, while others were contemplating changing sides to Naruto's small but present club. The only member was Hinata, who was also the founder since five years ago. Naruto knew about it, but didn't mind since she wouldn't pester him constantly like Sasuke's club did to him. If anything, he was flattered, and his fan would also train herself into the dirt to attempt to impress him. She wasn't like the other girls who would expect the boy to rescue them at every turn, and he admired that about her. Next up was the physical test, in which the students would spar with one of the teachers to determine their ability in hand-to-hand -hand combat. All of the civilian kids did fairly poor in his opinion, while the clan heirs once again exceeded his expectations. Hinata in particular surprised everyone, seeing as how she lasted the three minutes in the ring, as well as get two hits on Aruka. That was enough though, as two hits from the Hugas's Juken style to Jutsu could potentially kill someone. Sasuke lasted the entire five minutes and gained four hits on Mizuki, which made the fangirls squeal. Naruto was once again up last against Mizuki. As soon as Aruka said begin, Mizuki rushed at Naruto at mid in speeds, in hopes of making him look like an idiot. But that wouldn't work as well as he had hoped it would. Naruto sidestepped his attack like it was nothing, and hit him in the stomach. He didn't stop there, as he kicked him into the air, jumped up, and punched him three times. Mizuki landed outside of the ring, stupefied at just how he was defeated. Once again, the students found their mouths hanging wide open. How had he improved so much in such a short time? Once again, he had gotten the top score, and once again, the Achiha air was furious. They quickly made their way inside for the final test, the three basic ninjutsu. Only the truly unqualified failed this, while well, most passed it easily. Sasuke tried to show off by making five clones, one of which used a henge of Iruka, then used Kawarimi to switch places with him. This really impressed the instructors, as they had not taught how to use them in combination. But Naruto once again outclassed everyone by making 100 clones, all used a henge into Aruka, then started to Kawarimi all across the room, while appearing to fight with each other. The techniques didn't even have the slightest puffs of smoke in them either, nor did he use any hand signs. Now the instructors were not only impressed, but slightly envious because not even they could use the techniques with such precision. Needless to say that he had passed, while also gaining the Rookie of the Year award, which pissed Sasuke off to no end, as well as his now slightly dwindling fan club. Sakura had screeched how the dope must have cheated. Stupid Banshee, he couldn't cheat on any of the tests without the teachers catching it. Well, he could, but there would be no point since he was the best anyway. He picked up his leaf headband and walked away before anything could be said. He decided to head home before Mizuki could approach him, so he vanished in a flash of orange. This even further shocked everyone, including the Hokage that was watching in his crystal ball from the tower. It looked exactly like the Horation of the fourth Hokage. He decided that he needed to talk with Naruto and soon about how he had become so powerful so quickly. After arriving back home, Naruto quickly dispelled the shadow clones he had left at home, already used to the mental backlash they caused. He had just recently completed his own version of his father's Horation. One, he knew that it was a bad idea to use it in public, but was just too powerful to care anymore. He had already decided that it was time to reclaim his inheritance, mainly because he wanted the estate that came with it. He was tired of coming back to his crappy apartment. Over the two years of his training, Naruto had planted seals all around his home in order to stop the vandalism. He created them to have various effects on any who attempted to force their way inside or break the windows. 
They ranged from torrents of water to miniature explosions, and to this day, he still finds half-dead people on his doorstep. It's not like he cared if they trashed the place, he had already sealed most of his belongings in blood seals located on his arms. He just didn't want to deal with the mess anymore. One positive thing about the people he found lying there was that he could take any of their belongings legally, in exchange for not reporting the attempted burglary. He supposed that even the idiotic council members could come up with laws that were beneficial to him. He would have to keep that to himself, lest the law be revoked in a matter of days. The shinobi that had been fooled were the ones that really interested him though. It was from several shinobi that he had gotten his new blades. They were both okatanas and very beautiful weapons, as well as deadly. One had a traditional black sheath and guard, while the blade was a dark red color from the base to tip. The other had a silver sheath and guard, while the blade was also silver, but had a black line going down the very edge of it. He also collected a variety of other weapons, from basic kunai to explosive tags, you name it, and he probably found it at one time or another. Money was among those things, and it was a good thing too. He had been using a hinge to shop ever since the incident and was cursing his former stupidity once again for not thinking of something. All in all, his quality of life had improved drastically in a short time and stayed that way ever since. But back to his apartment, he could have easily just used his wood element to create a mansion that could even rival the Huga compound, but he wasn't going to risk it. If the council ever got wind of him having the wood release bloodline, he would either be executed on the spot or automatically forced into the craw. It was bad enough that he was the heir of two different clans, if that were to leak to the public, the inevitable shitstorm would not be good to say the least. He had already had a false story to tell them should they ever question him for any reason. It was always a good idea to have at least five different backup plans in the Shinobus's world, which was what Aruka-sensei had told them. His train of thought was cut short by a whirlwind of leaves, and by the looks of them, it was almost certainly Anbu. Naruto-san, Hokage-sama has requested your presence immediately, said the rough-looking man in the boar's mask. And without another word, he grabbed Naruto's shoulder and once again disappeared in another swirl of leaves. Reappearing in the Hokage's office, the Anbu silently left them in private. He was quite curious as to why the Hokage had previously ordered all of the Anbu to leave the room once the boy was in the room, but thought little of it since it was unwise to question the superiors. As the old man silently observed Naruto, he was also thinking of the light which he saw him disappear in. Hokage-sama, you wish to see me, said the boy in a serious manner. He already knew what this was about, but wanted to wait a while longer before revealing his fake story. He was surprised to see the man acting tense, as if he was expecting something to lunge at him at any moment. Yes Naruto-kun, I would like to discuss your recent progress, as well as what your real ability level is. For around one minute, the atmosphere was tense, until Naruto returned to his calm and dignified manner. So you've noticed. I can't really say that I didn't expect this, you are quite observant. So tell me, what all do you want to know about me? Once again, the man seemed to pause, as if looking for the answers to his questions without speaking. I would first of all like to know how you have gained so much power in so little time. I was watching your graduation and was amazed at your ability over those techniques. You can do them without seals, as well as manipulating them in a way that not even some Jounin can. Is someone training you outside of the academy? Naruto let out a sigh. He didn't like lying to the old man, but it had to be done if his plans were to come to fruition. No Hokage-sama, I have simply trained myself into the ground over the past few years. In the classes, I have always held back my true capabilities. It is unwise for a shinobi to divulge all of his secrets, be they friend or foe, and as you know, I have many enemies. The Hokage grimaced at this, as he knew that there was nothing he could do about the animosity given to him by the civilians. There hadn't been any successful attacks on Naruto in the past two years, and with good reason. Naruto fondly remembered the day that he had shown the villagers that he wouldn't take their crap any longer. Flashback. It was nearing the sixth month of Naruto's intensive training. As he was quietly walking down the road, he wondered why it was not filled with merchants. It was well past time for them to be open, he knew because he walked this way nearly every day to Ichiraku Raymond. He might be able to afford better food due to the use of Henge, but the owner and his daughter were some of the only people who treated him kindly. A slight shift in the wind brought him out of his musings, he looked around him as a mob beginning to form with several people coming out of the surrounding buildings. They were carrying various weapons, such as the usual mobs that came to torture him, but that was not what caught his eye. No, what was interesting to him was the strong smell of alcohol. The way most were tumbling around, he could tell that they were obviously very drunk. This was very fortunate for him, as the law dictates that no shinobi, academy student or otherwise, could use excessive force on an able-minded citizen. These people were obviously not able-minded, therefore he could fight back legally without repercussions. He was seriously not going to waste this opportunity. 
Hey demon brat, we've come to take your life. We're sending you back to hell where you belong. Yelled the stumbling man with a slurred speech. They slowly advanced upon him like moths to the flame, when suddenly a loud crushing sound could be heard. They slowly looked up to see the water towers in the area began to crumble under some unseen pressure. Some looked back to where the boy was standing only to see a log that had a chibi Naruto carved into it. They looked closer and saw the writing that was also on it. It said, got you now you bastards. Hope you have a nice swim. Naruto. The towers suddenly burst, and the ones who had snapped out of their drunken stupor began to run. Several screams could be heard down the street moments later. He grinned at the payback he was able to give them every once in a while. He knew that the council would be calling for his head for, squandering the resources of Konoha or the more likely, attack on unarmed civilians. He sighed in defeat at that thought. He knew what he was getting into by just showing the slightest bit of resistance, so he might as well give them hell to while doing it. But this was one well thought out plan. His parents still owned this particular plot of land, and once he received his inheritance, it would be his as well. Interestingly enough, both the Yuzumaki and Namikaze owned at least 25% of the businesses in Konoha. He could single-handedly financially ruin the entire village if he wanted to. That would make great blackmail for any of the civilians, should they try to mess with him more than he was comfortable. He would definitely have to check with the old man as soon as he knew the truth about how he could go about getting it. Flashback end. After shaking his head free from such frivolous thoughts, he noticed that the Hokage was thinking deeply about something. If you're wondering about something this much, then I assume it's also got to do with the furball in my gut doesn't it? The old man whipped his head up so fast you might think it would have broken at the mention of Naruto's tenant. How long have you known about this? What else do you know? Said the man in a slightly ashamed voice. Remember the last attack on me two years ago? I met with the QB inside of my mindscape. He let a few things go without thinking, one of those things being the identities of my parents. I know that I am the son of Kashina, the Red Death Uzumaki, and Minato Namikaze, the Yellow Flash and Fourth Hokage. Naruto began to worry for the old man's health after seeing the look on his face. He looked like he was about to go into a mixture of cardiac arrest and a stroke at the same time. After a whole minute of staring at each other, Naruto finally had enough and continued. But don't worry, I understand why you didn't tell me about them sooner. Both have incredibly powerful enemies that I'm not ready to face yet. Some that might wage a war for simply having their genetics. So don't blame yourself old man, I know that you have to look out for Konoha first before me. At this, the Hokage seemed to release a breath that he didn't know that he was holding in. But at the same time, was shocked at the level of intelligence that the boy seemed to hide from others. As for my abilities, I really don't have a trainer. But the physical attributes and knowledge of the Horatian, Shadow Clones, Elemental Manipulation and Rasengan are due to the QB as well. You see, just having the beast within me has increased my speed and strength, as well as give me natural affinities for every element, including the sub-elements. The knowledge is due to my father placing an additional seal on me that was triggered during the same attack two years ago. It automatically sent the necessary information on how the jutsu and techniques worked, so all I had to do was train my body to get used to doing them. The old man was skeptical at first, but since Minato was a seal master, he didn't dwell on it too much. He sighed once again, knowing that he had to tell the council about this, lest they accuse the demon of manipulating him. I believe you Naruto. But since you are so informed about everything now, I'm sure that you also know that I have to tell the council of this. I have no choice but to report to them, or they just might incite a rebellion, that's why I have had to let so much of my power diminish over the years. It's fine. Just call a meeting right now so I can be present as well. I kind of want to see the looks on their faces when they learn the truth. But I will have to tread more carefully now. We both know that the elders want to turn me into nothing but an emotionless weapon. I agree. Well, we should head to the council chambers. I will have my Anbu call the members for an emergency meeting. Let's go shall we? After calling back the Anbu to deliver the message, the two walked through the tower and entered the meeting room. The clan heads were already present, seeing as how they truly understood the kind of implications an emergency meeting from the Hokage could potentially be. The last time they were called like this was the time of the Achiha massacre, so they were completely serious. Naruto remained in the center of the room, while the Hokage took his position at the head. As the civilian side came into the room sluggishly, most of them stopped to scowl or glare at Naruto, who paid no attention to them, seeing as how he was used to that. As everyone finally seated themselves, the civilians immediately started to question what the boy, as they spat the word out as if it were poison, was doing in the room with them. One such person was a woman with short pink hair and a voice that sounded like a knife going across a chalkboard. He had no doubt that this person was none other than Sakiri Haruno, Sakura's mother. Okage-sama, what is this demon doing here? 
Has the little monster shown his true colors, if so, then I propose that we publicly execute him. Their voice made everyone cringe, even the normally stoic Aburami and Hyuga clan heads. No Haruno-san, he has not done what you have suggested. We are here to discuss the identity of him though. And one more thing, if you break my law again, then I will follow through with your execution. Is that clear? The old man put out a small amount of killing intent, Rakai, too, making the civilians tremble, knowing that he was serious this time. I have chosen to announce his true heritage to the village tomorrow evening, after the team selections are over with, but must disclose the matter beforehand with you all. What do you mean Hokage-sama? What's this about his heritage? The one who asked was Tsu Minyazuka, clan head of the Inuzuka family. The rest of the council was silently pondering what he could have meant as well. They knew that Naruto was an orphan, so how did the old man know his parents? As I was just about ready to explain, I have had to keep his true identity a secret for the safety of both himself, as well as the village. His true name is Naruto Namikaze. A sharp gasp was heard from every member upon learning this. Some of the civilians were about to dispute his claims when he pulled out a folder and laid it onto the table. I knew that you would not believe me, so I brought the proof with me to back up my claim. I was witness to the birth, as well as Tsunade Senju, who delivered him. His mother was Kashina Yuzumaki, the Red Death. People were even more shocked after hearing this. The elders looked like they were going to have heart attacks and die right then, while most of the civilians paled. He was the clan heir of two different clans and could have them killed as reparation for their years of abuse. I am also giving him his inheritance now. The estate located next to the Hyuga compound is now his, along with both parents' companies that have been run by the village until now. Congratulations Naruto, you now have a small fortune in your bank account, as well as a one-fourth share of Kanoha's economic profit in domestic business. Now the civilians thought that they were doomed. If the boy were to advertise his stores with his family name, then their businesses were toast. The villagers would flock to his stores to try and earn his good favor. Tomorrow I will be announcing this information to the village, so that is all. And with that, the Hokage walked out of the door as quickly as he came, leaving no room for argument. But what truly shocked them was that Naruto simply disappeared into a blur of orange. At this point, anyone who ever treated him badly was sweating profusely. They knew then that they had screwed up big time. Naruto was currently at the entrance to what was now his new home. After flashing out of the meeting with the elders and council, he started laughing his ass off. The looks of utter horror on their faces were engraved into his memories forever. But they had much bigger problems awaiting them than they thought. But he would think more about their punishments later. Right now, he needed to be focused on getting into his new estate. The gates were just as massive as his new neighbors the Hyuga clan's gate. He was happy to see the privacy seals around the entire area, it wouldn't do for anyone to be able to constantly spy on him from their own home. He smeared blood on the front of the gate to make it open, as the reason why it hasn't been broken into before are the numerous blood seals littering the area. When they finally pushed open, Naruto was blown away by what he saw. It was a much more luxurious mansion than he had expected. Granted that most of the area was covered in various environmental training grounds, the home itself was much larger than the main housing areas of the Hyuga. He quickly snapped out of his stupor and sent out a horde of shadow clones to clean and scout out the property. It had still taken nearly half an hour for 1,000 clones to see everything. But the memories he had gained from the clones, he learned that the home was divided into four floors. Each floor had its own specific purpose and theme added to them. The first floor was actually a basement of sorts. There was a huge training ground with weapons of all kinds around it, and they all looked to be top of the line. It would seem that this area is supposed to be for testing out the more dangerous jutsu and seals. A great idea in Naruto's opinion, seeing as how most will explode in your face the first few hundred tries when creating them. That was how most of his shadow clones had met their end. He shuddered at the thought of him being the one during some of those experiments. Moving on, the ground floor was mostly composed of a single giant dining room and kitchen. The only ones who most likely had a larger kitchen in the entire village were the Akamichi clan. This was most likely used by his father for entertaining foreign ambassadors or wealthy trade company owners. The second story was the main living area. It would be the perfect area for raising a family. It held an air of regality, but was warm and inviting as a home should be as well. It contained five very large bedrooms, the five bathrooms connected to them were more like giant hot spring areas and a much smaller dining room and meeting area in the direct center. All in all, it actually felt like a true home should. He knew then that he was going to love living here. He would easily be able to find a willing wife once his family name got out. Also, he had grown his spiky hair down to his shoulders, mainly to look like his father. The final floor though, was by far his favorite. It was a giant library that made even the personal library in use by the Hokage seem like an ant compared to an elephant. 
Naruto knew that he was much more intelligent than most of the people on the continent, but it never hurt to gain more knowledge. The books contained everything one would possibly want to know about anything, though the S-ranked and forbidden jutsu were locked away in a vault at one end of the hallway. He went straight up to the living area and fell onto what he thought was the nearest bed. He may have more stamina than anyone else, but dealing with the council for more than five minutes was bad for your health. He would have killed them, but didn't want any more negative attention on him from the public. He slowly fell asleep, noticing the fact that he was on the kitchen table instead of a bed. Yep, it was official now. Dealing with them could cause the victim to have hallucinations as well. It seemed as though Danzo had tried to place him under Gain Jutsu to obey his every command, but thanks to chakra reflection seals he placed on his body, it only ended up slightly disorienting him. He would definitely have to do something about them soon. The next morning. Naruto awoke to find himself on the table, once again thankful for the seals on his body. He had already thought of what he could do now that Danzo assumed that he would have to obey him. He would follow him to the root headquarters and eliminate everyone inside, including Danzo himself. All he had to do to cover his tracks was completely conceal his chakra, follow the old fool, and incite chaos by killing their leader in front of them. From there it was just trapping them all in his impenetrable steel release jutsu and unleashing a powerful fire jutsu to incinerate them all. Shaking his head of those thoughts for now, he got up to begin one of the most important days of his life. Not. He wasn't foolish like most of the other kids were, and he knew that a majority of them that graduate wouldn't live past the age of 20. Being a ninja was a very dangerous occupation, something that most of the civilians didn't really understand. Any one of them could die at any given moment, it didn't matter how many cool jutsu you had learned. A shinobi was one who killed without remorse and was prepared to die for their village. Almost none of this year's rookies truly knew what they were getting themselves into, nor did they expect to kill or be killed on the battlefield at such a young age. No matter, they would get a very disturbing wake-up call one day soon. He headed out of the gate to see who his new team consisted of. All he hoped for was not to be on the same team as the duck assas K and Banshee. As long as he didn't have to work with them, he would be perfectly happy. It's too bad the goddess of luck decided that he needed a rude awakening that day. He had nothing but good luck for the past two years. It was time for the return payment. He arrived in the classroom in a yellow blur, scaring many of the students and shocking the eternally brooding Saz K. If they thought that was a shock, then what they were seeing now might be enough to kill some of the weaker civilian students. A miniature fourth Hokage was standing in front of the class, he had the same physical appearance, as well as similar clothing. He was wearing a similar white cape, but with slight differences. It had the same red and orange flames at the bottom, but it also had the kanji for elemental cataclysm across the back. Underneath was a blue and black variation of Anbu attire, as well as several scrolls filled into a green vest that are similar to the ones Jounin wear. By the time the initial shock had worn off, Iruka had walked back into the room with the Hokage, who had decided that they could use even more of a shock today. That and he wanted to get away from the mountains of paperwork. For the first time that year, Iruka didn't think he would have to scream for them to be silent. It would be incredibly disrespectful to even whisper out of place when the leader of your village is present for official business. Too bad he places way too much faith in his students. What do you think you're doing idiot? Are you trying to look cooler than Sasuke Kuna dead last like you could never compare to him? No one needs me to tell them that Sakura was the one who yelled that right. After her little outburst in front of the Hokage, even the other useless fangirls were starting to question her grip on reality. A stunt like that could get kids from other, less kind villages executed. Acting like nothing she had said had phased him, Naruto bowed and politely said, I'm glad to see you here Lord Hokage. May I ask the reason why you are here today? Doesn't it inconvenience you to be out of the office for so long? Not at all Naruto-san, even I need to get out to converse with the public for a while. That is an important responsibility as well for the Hokage. I see, thank you for your explanation Hokage-sama. I shall go to my seat to await my placement then. The students watched as the two conversed as if no one else were in the room. This was supposed to be the loud mouth of the class. Even though he had calmed down by a considerable amount, this was just crazy. It had only been a day since they had seen him, so what was going on with him? As Naruto tried to return to his desk, Sakura, still angry at being ignored, got up and threw a slow and sloppy punch at him. He easily dodged, pulled out a kunai, and was behind her holding it to her neck so quickly, no one but the Hokage could see him. I would advise you not to attack me without provocation, Haruno-san. Doing such a thing to a fellow shinobi is punishable by death, and I will do my duty as a guardian of this village. This stunned the students into complete silence. Even the normally sleeping Shikamaru Nara was staring at him wide-eyed. Okage-sama, what do you wish for me to do with her? Shall she be taken into custody, or do you wish for me to execute her right now? No Naruto-san, release her for now. 
I believe that she has learned her lesson about proper conduct. Yes Hokage-sama. The moment he released her, she bolted to her seat, scared out of her mind. Even if she was a stupid fangirl, she did have survival instincts, and they were telling her not to cross the blonde in any way. He walked up the steps to his seat and focused completely on the Hokage. Even if he was on friendly terms with the man in private, he had an image to maintain in public. Honorifics were even used by his son during official business. Now, I know that you are all wondering why Lord Hokage is in the room. The reason is that he plans to make an announcement to the entire village later today, but will be telling us first. If you will, Hokage-sama. Thank you Aruka-san. I have come here today to reveal the true identity of your classmate Naruto, who goes by the last name Uzumaki. I have kept his true lineage from everyone other than myself and Jureya of the Sanin. His last name currently in use is from his mother, Kishina Uzumaki, Aka the Red Death of Konoha, and an S-class ninja with a bloodline of chakra chain usage, which has also passed down to Naruto as well. She was also the sole survivor of the Uzumaki clan that originated in Whirlpool Country. A large gasp was heard from the classroom. Many of them had learned of the Red Death, but were unable to learn the identity of them. It was classified as a village secret, only known to Jounin and the council. She was known for being completely ruthless on the battlefield, always being covered in blood, which spread the rumor that her hair was actually dyed red from all of her victim's blood. Before any could respond, the elderly man continued. That is not all though. His true name is what needed to be kept a secret. His true name is Naruto Namikaze, and he is also the son of the fourth Hokage, Minato Namikaze, better known as the Yellow Flash of Konoha. He was from a fairly poor merchant family, but still qualified as a clan due to their amazing skill in Fuenjutsu, or sealing as you know it, and was also the last member of that clan as well. By now, the many students who had picked on him over the years, especially Sakura, were sweating bullets. He could make their lives a living hell if he wanted to. With two votes on the Shinobi Council, as well as the poll his name was sure to have, he could manipulate the entire council just the way he wanted to. Oddly enough, most of the class wasn't yelling like he thought they would. Instead, they were deathly quiet. No one spoke for what felt like hours, but in reality was just two minutes. Some people forgot how to breathe, including Aruka himself. They all slowly looked back at him in shock, waiting to see if he would say something. What are you all looking at? I thought that it was pretty obvious when I came and dressed like this. By the way, I do hold grudges. He looked at some of them evilly while chuckling creepily, making some of them whimper of what they knew was coming for them. Well, with that out of the way, I shall now announce the teams for this year. Teams 1 to 6 are unimportant, Team 7, Sasuke Ichiha, Sakura Haruno, she squealed at this getting ready to scream how true love always prevails or some stupid fangirl crap like that, until she saw the entire class glaring at her, not wanting to get on the bad side of the Hokage or Naruto. As I was saying, the final member is Naruto Namikaze. Your Jounin sensei is Kakashi Hataki. They all heard a loud crashing noise and turned to see Naruto repeatedly slamming his head into the desk, but looking as stoic as when he walked in. The Hokage continued to speak as if nothing were going on because he stopped after the third time. The mate will be Shino Aburami, Hinata Hyuga, and Kiba Inuzuka. Your Jounin sensei will be Kurina Yuhi. Team 9 is still in commission. Team 10 is Ino Yamanaka, Choji Akimichi, and Shikamaru Nara. Your Jounin sensei is Asuma Suratobi. They will be arriving shortly, so prepare yourselves. That is all. And with that, he disappeared in a puff of smoke, leaving a class with informational overload. No one dared to make a move towards the blonde, all too afraid of what he might do. That was the sight that a woman with long black hair walked into. Well, doesn't this seem tense? Teammate, follow me to training ground 15, and don't be late. They quickly got up, eager to leave the tenseness of the room. Except Hinata, who glanced back at Naruto, seemingly conflicted about something. He thought that was pretty strange. Even though he was a genius in most aspects, he was still a novice in romance. But what do you expect, him only having Sakura hit him in his earlier years was the closest he had ever gotten with a female, which even he had to admit was pretty sad. The other teams slowly began to drift out as the class, until Team 7 were the only ones left. The tension, however, was as strong as ever. They waited for another two hours, and Naruto had been calmly reading a few Injutsu book. It was his father's research notes to be exact, which detailed the plans Minato had for an anti-copying seal. This would allow Naruto to freely use Jutsu, should he ever need to, and not worry about the Ichiha when he awakened the Sharingan. It was very useful stuff indeed. The spiky-haired Jounin with a face mask came in lazily while holding an orange book. Team 7, my first impression of you is I hate you. Meet me up on the roof. He puffed up in smoke, along with Naruto who instead decided to use lightning instead of plain smoke. Sasuke snarled in anger at how the dead last had so much power. That power should be mine. 
I deserve it, because I am an Acha elite. I'll just make the loser give it to me, there's no way that I could lose. Obviously he was just as delusional as the Banshee. He had lost several times, but leaves them all out to be more convincing. The sad part was it was to convince himself more than anyone else. They met up on the roof for introductions, which were brief to say the least. The Jounin started off using a very vague description. You already know my name, I don't feel like telling you my likes or dislikes, and as for dreams, that's personal. It's your turn to share Pinky. She scowled at the nickname, my name is Sakura Hurano. I like, looks over at Sasuke, my dreams are, once again looks at said emo, and I hate Eno and Nardot. She paused at that, remembering what had happened earlier. She did not want to get on that kid's bad side. She now knew that he would kill both of his teammates without hesitation, should the need arise for it. The other three took notice of it as well. You're up Mr. Sunshine. Sasuke saw that he was talking to him and huffed. I'm Sasuke Che. I hate many things and like almost nothing. My dreams, no, my ambitions are to kill a certain man, revive my clan, and also I'm going to be king of the emos. Reference to One Piece series, which I also don't own. Naruto was incredibly confused and shocked at the statement, but the others seemed fine. Maybe that game Jutsu had affected him more than he had thought. No matter, he would go home and dispel its effects as soon as he was done here. Okay then, your turn blondie. The nickname didn't affect him like he thought it would. My name is Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. I like Raymon, training, the Hokage, and creating seals in Jutsu. I dislike rapists, child abusers, those who can't look past rumors to see the real truth, and the civilian council. My dreams are to retire young and raise a family in a secluded town where no one could find me, as well as to purge as much evil from this world as I possibly can for my family to be safe in their lives. Takashi was surprised that Naruto had thought out that far ahead in his life. Most shinobi accept that they won't have families due to the extremely high death rate, so to dream of having a family in this occupation was not a very good idea. Nevertheless, he was happy that his sensei's son had not let that stop him. Well, we will meet tomorrow at 5 a.m. at training ground 9 to take the real genin test. The one you have just taken is only the preliminary test. This test is much harder and has only a 33% passing rate, oh, and make sure not to eat anything. You'll puke if you do, and I don't want to clean up the mess. Before they could respond, he was once again gone in a puff of smoke. Sasuke was about to demand that Naruto fight him, but realized that he was already gone as well. He left grumbling about the useless people all around him, with Sakura following behind like a lost puppy. Naruto appeared back inside of his home, deciding to forego the gate this time. He trained until dark, ate a light meal, and went to bed. He dispelled the remnants of the game Jutsu cast over him, once again thinking of what he was going to do once he had the chance. He wondered how the village had taken learning about his true heritage. He knew that by tomorrow, the way he was treated would take a major turn. But he didn't know if it would be good or bad things to have everyone treat him like the Acha. He decided to think later on that subject. He would make that turn out to his advantage somehow. At least he thought that he could. The morning after the announcement was completely predictable. After the Hokage had shown the birth certificate and witness testimony to the crowd of people the previous day, most of them were terrified, while others smirked due to being the few that were kind to the boy. The people of Ichiraku Raymon were undoubtedly the happiest of them all. The old man Ichiraku himself had been a good friend of both his parents, and he now knew where Naruto had gotten his Raymon addiction from. Kishina was the only other person he knew that could practically inhale 20 bowls of Raymon in one sitting. Many of the shop owners that had kicked him out or overcharged him were all having panic attacks. Most of that large group of people is currently thinking of ways to get back in his good graces, but to no avail. Naruto ignored the greetings of the stupid civilians, only smiling and politely replying to the people that had always been kind to him. To the very few who still saw him as the demon, he gave off a small amount of kai to scare them away. He thought about those that had never done him wrong, which was a small list when compared to the number of those that have. Let's see, I don't hate the Hokage and his family, the Ichiraku family, the Inuzuka, the Nara clan, the Akamichi, most of the Amanaka clan, the branch family of the Hyuga, along with Hinata and her little sister, along with a few of the shinobi, and very few civilians. He was making a mental checklist for himself of the people that didn't deserve to be hurt in any way. That leaves the entire civilian council, most of the civilians, most of the main branch of the Hyuga, a few of the Amanaka, a majority of the shinobi in the village, Sasuke, Sakura, Ino, but she could be redeemable, the fangirls of the Achiha at the academy, and most of the children around my age. Beside, knowing getting back at all of them would take a considerable amount of time. He no longer wanted to become the Hokage, seeing it as a waste of time to protect and serve the people that had once hurt him so badly. He now just wanted to cleanse the world of evil and raise a family sometime in the future. 
The idea of a wife was not that far off if he didn't want dragged into the craw, so he knew that he would have to find an acceptable suitor soon. None of the girls that he knew would be acceptable with who he is. Hinata was the only one he would even consider, if not for the fact that she was also the heiress of another clan. That would bring major political problems that could potentially lead to civil war. So there went his hopes for that. He supposed that a girl from outside of the village would be the best choice. Preferably one without a clan to speak of, or was outcast from them for some reason. Someone they would like to get rid of was the best option for him now. He put a hold on those thoughts as he walked into the training ground. He was an hour and a half late because of his new sensei's reputation, and would have been later if not for the fact that he needed to burn some of his built-up energy. With the monstrous amount of stamina he had built up, the only negative side effect was the seemingly endless amount of energy that came with it. He knew that he had to work on this, as his plans would not work out well if he could not keep a calm head. He was once again broken out of his thoughts by the screeching of his new teammate. Naruto, you're late. She once again tried to rush forward and hit Naruto as she had the day before, much to his annoyance. He grabbed her by the arm and twisted it behind her back. They were in the same position as yesterday in the classroom, and he was once again faster than the other two could see. I see that you have still not learned your lesson Haruno. I believe that you need a crash course on what it truly means to be a shinobi, said the calm but chilling voice of the boy behind her. He quietly whispered something into her ear and blew a black dust into it. She started screaming louder than she ever had, before her eyes rolled back into her head and succumbed to darkness. Both Sasuke and Kakashi were watching wide-eyed at the display before them. Kakashi jumped down from his hiding spot to see if his new student was alright. Naruto, is she alright? I mean, you didn't you know kill her did you? He asked this with slight concern in his voice. He was also curious of exactly what he had just done, never before having seen anything quite like it. He would have suspected Gain Jutsu were it not for the fact that his file said he could only create nothing more than the simple bunshin. Oh how wrong his poor sensei was. It's alright Kakashi sensei, she will be fine. If you're wondering what I did, it was the black powder that you saw me use. It shuts down most of the nervous system temporarily, but causes a great shock of pain to course through the body for a few moments before taking effect. I made it myself, and it's quite effective, don't you agree? He was lying through his teeth, as it was in fact only a B-rank gain jutsu he had learned just the previous night. The other two just stared at him for a moment before shrugging it off. The reason for Sasuke was because he couldn't care less about Sakura. Kakashi wasn't complaining because he was still too lazy to do much about it. Well, the test is about to start, so would you please wake her up? Naruto muttered a few things under his breath as he unsealed a jar of smelling salts and put it under her nose. She snapped awake and immediately ran away from him. It seemed as though her intelligence had recovered enough from fangirl disease to at least have some form of common sense. Well, now that we are all here, it is time for your test. It is 10 o'clock right now, so you have two hours to get one of the bells from me. If you can't, then you will be sent back to the academy for another year. He held up two bells to show them where they were. Sakura, being the ever-observant one, had to point out the obvious to everyone. But sensei, there are only two bells. Ah yes Sakura that of course means that one of you will fail no matter what, as well as being tied to a post while the rest of us eat our lunches in front of them. As if on cue, Sakura and Sasuke had their stomachs growl. Naruto was fine though, eating a large breakfast just an hour earlier. Alright, make sure that you come at me with the intent to kill if you want a shot. Begin. Two of them went into the trees to try and wait for their opportunity to strike. Naruto remained in the same spot though, greatly confusing Kakashi. Didn't you hear me say go? Why are you still here? It's because I already know the true meaning of this test Kakashi sensei, which is teamwork. Am I right sensei? Kakashi was completely shocked that Naruto was able to see the true meaning of the test. How did you know? Did someone tell you beforehand about it? No sensei. It's what you said yesterday that gave you away. You said that we each had a 33% chance to pass, so if we work together, doesn't that mean we have a combined 99%? But there is one problem with this method for this team. Sasuke is too arrogant to believe that he needs any help, and Sakura would just go along with him, regardless of what was being said. I on the other hand have no problem cooperating with others. But the team dynamics of us will be horrible to say the least. Bakashi couldn't help but agree with him. What he had was an arrogant Avenger, a useless fangirl, and only one competent enough to actually be a shinobi. Be that as it may, I would still like to test you all to get a feel for your skills. So get ready and don't hold back Naruto. Oh how he would regret those words. Naruto took off the cloak that he had been wearing and threw it to the ground. He purposefully kept the weight seals on to get a reaction from his new team. An earth-shattering boom was heard all around the forest, as a massive crater was formed from the cloak as it hit the ground, shocking all those present. Kakashi was even more surprised now. 
Not even my guy wears that much weight. Before any of them could blink, Kakashi had revealed his Sharingani to face his student. He knew that there would be absolutely no taking it easy in this fight. Naruto rushed forward and delivered an almost bone-breaking punch to Kakashi's stomach, sending the mask down and crashing into the trees. He recovered Sir Fire Style. Fireball Jutsu. A large ball of flames barreled towards Naruto. He looked completely unconcerned and allowed it to hit him. Since that attack was charged with a large amount of chakra, Kakashi was worried that he had overdone himself and just killed his student. But today was proving to be just one big surprise. Naruto calmly walked out of the flames without a single mark, dusting himself off lightly. Even his clothes were completely clean. Sakura was thinking that it was some sort of trick, Sasuke was once again seething a power he believed was rightfully his, and Kakashi didn't know what to think. Before Kakashi could move, Naruto rushed towards him at high jaun and level speeds, and once again punched his sensei. Kakashi was pushed towards the lake this time, but quickly landed on its surface. He ran those several dozen hand seals and shouted, water style. Water dragon jutsu. The giant dragon made of water made its way towards the now bored looking Naruto. He slowly raised his hand, and just when the water dragon was about to hit, he closed his fist, making the dragon explode. He yawned at the lackluster performance by his new teacher, slightly disappointed that he wasn't as strong as he had expected. Again, for what seemed like the thousandth time today, Kakashi was completely flabbergasted. How could an academy student be this strong? If he didn't know better, then he would say that Naruto was actually holding back. What he didn't know was the fact that Naruto was in fact holding back a ton of his true power. He was only at one-tenth his original strength, not including the 4,000 pounds of weight that he was still wearing. If he were to go all out, it would take no less than an alliance of every major hidden village to even have a chance to kill him. He could have killed Kakashi at any time during the fight, but wanted to test his power. He decided to end the fight now, seeing as how it was not what he expected. Naruto rushed forward one final time, jumped into the lake completely submerged, and swam downwards. Kakashi was looking all around him in the water, trying to figure out exactly what his insanely strong student was doing. He got his answer in the form of a much larger version of Kakashi's water dragon jutsu. It was at least five times larger and had demonic features on its face. He had no time to react and was hit full force by the colossal dragon. He was sent flying back for a final time towards the center of the training ground, breathing heavily after nearly drowning at the hands of his own student. The timer that he had set on one of the log posts earlier rang, signaling the end of the test. All three students went to the middle where Kakashi was, Sasuke and Sakura quickly grabbing the bells from their recovering sensei. Naruto was not surprised at the selfish action, which is why he smirked when the bells disappeared in a puff of smoke. They were now in his hand, and the bells that they were holding disappeared, leaving only rocks. I had already expected for you two to do something like this, so I used a minor Fuinjutsu seal on the rocks that has a similar effect to the henge technique. I have had the bells since the fight first began, right when Kakashi Sensei was charging at me the first time. He threw the bells at his so-called teammates looking at Kakashi with a serious expression. I know that you are being forced to pass us because the Ichiha has the council as his bisses, so I'm going home since we pass already. I also know that they are pressuring you to only teach him, so don't worry about me getting angry. I am already strong enough to look after myself, as you have just seen. He on the other hand, needs a lesson on humility, as well as what the true source of strength is. He can't become stronger through the path of revenge. If that is all, then I will see you all tomorrow for training our missions. And with that, he puffed out of existence, showing that the real Naruto had already left without them noticing. Bakashi was feeling mixed emotions about his new team. On one hand, he was impressed with Naruto for being so powerful, but still acting so mature and reasonable. He didn't boast about his abilities, he simply stated the truth. He didn't even know if he had anything to teach Naruto. On the other hand, he had two students that were absolutely unqualified to become shinobi at all. One who was only seeking power for revenge, and the other only interested in said avenger. He sighed sadly, due to the fact that he was hoping for a team like his own back in his genin days. You heard him, meet me here at 6 o'clock in the morning for our introductory training. But I must say that I am very disappointed in you. To use such underhanded tactics against your own teammate is a horrible thing to do. There is a saying that describes how I feel about that. Those who do not listen to orders are trash, but those who abandon their comrades are worse than trash. Right now, both of you are worse than trash. Without another word, he puffed out of sight to report passing this team, if you could call it that. Bakashi arrived at the tower in the middle of the room with all of the other Jounin sensei just a few minutes later. Yo, sorry I'm late, an old lady asked me to. He never got to finish as the Hokage had already started speaking, impatient at having to wait for the man. I don't care about your excuses Kakashi. 
Now that we are all in attendance, we will start with seeing which teams have passed this year. Themes 1 to 6 have failed. Theme 7 passes. Many of the Jounin were looking at him incredulously seeing as how he failed the previous 7 Gen and teams that were sent to him. Theme 8 passes. Theme 10 has passed. This was certainly not a shock, seeing as how they are the second generation of one of the most feared team combinations in Kanoha's history, the Inoshikacho formation. Alright then, Team Jounin, give your report of each team's strengths and weaknesses. Team 10 is a well-balanced combination, just like their fathers. Choji is very strong and has high reserves for his age, but needs to work on his speed. Shikamaru is a genius, but lazy just like his father and would make an excellent tactician if he would take everything seriously. Ino, well, is a fangirl. I will have to break her of that unnecessary and shameful trait. At least she has stopped dieting and claims she will take training more seriously. The mate will make the perfect tracking and reconnaissance team. Shino is a quick thinker who is logical in all of his assumptions, just like all Aburami, but needs to open up more if he is to gain the trust of his teammates. Kiba is extremely quick for his Anata was a shocker for me. She is no longer shy like she was in the academy and takes her training completely seriously as her top priority. Her Tejutsu skills are excellent and her mastery over the Hyuga techniques has risen farther in the past two months than what even their elders thought possible. All in all, it has the potential to be a great team. Theme 7 was completely different than what I expected. Naruto was the only reason that they passed at all. He fought me as an equal while I was using the Sharingan. I used several b rank Jutsu and he took them head-on with no problems. He effectively used them as a distraction and ran towards me at high and level speeds to deliver punches that were on par with Tsunade Senju after he had taken off weights heavier than the ones that guy wears. He defeated me in combat with a water dragon jutsu the size of this tower, and he wasn't even winded. The other Jounin were in shock at what they were hearing. To hear one of their most powerful ninja were defeated was a little more than frightening. Kakashi continued with a darker tone. Then there were the other two. Those two don't deserve to be in the shinobi program at all. While I was down, they rushed at me and took the two bells for themselves, not doing any of the work. It's a good thing that Naruto had already grabbed the bells at the start of our fight. All they were holding were two rocks with Yuinjutsu seals applied to them to make them seem like bells. Naruto proceeded to give them each a bell, along with stating the purpose of the test. All in all, he is the only one that deserves to pass. Even the third Hokage had to keep his rage in check at the behavior of the two. He was going to have a long chat with them should they ever try anything like that again. Very well, you may all go. I will file the necessary paperwork for the new teams in circulation. You may begin taking missions tomorrow afternoon if you wish. They all quickly dispersed in puffs of smoker leaves, leaving the poor old man to the misery of paperwork. He spoke to himself in a solemn manner. Um, I wonder exactly what you are hiding from me Naruto. Hopefully you will tell me when you feel the time is right. If only he had known about the boy's true plan, he might have been able to prevent it from happening. For the past month, Naruto had sent shadow clones to all of his team meetings. He saw no point in wasting his time with them with them when he could be planning for his future goals. In this time, he had sent at least 10 blood clones under his advanced henge out of the village. Their purpose. To go out into the world to retrieve certain objects that he discovered while filing the vast amounts of information he had obtained. These things were very special in all senses. They would allow him to accomplish his plans of ridding this corrupted world of many more impure souls. Anzo had been dealt with the previous week and no one knows where he is. Well, no one but him of course. He smiled evilly at the thought of just what had happened. Flashback. Naruto was walking through one of the various training grounds that littered the village. He turned around a corner when he spotted a peculiar anbu with a symbol located on his mask. He went through a series of hand seals, which Naruto memorized, and the tree he had been facing suddenly split open. He quickly hurried inside and closed the entrance, not giving Naruto a chance to go through and see what was in there himself. Naruto quickly walked to the same tree and went through the same seals as the strange man did. Just as before, the tree had split open. He walked inside cautiously, prepared to strike at any moment. When he walked through the door, he saw a large metal column in the middle of what looked to be a giant room. He looked up to see Danzo frowning at him, obviously he had not been expecting him. Well, it seems that we have an unwanted visitor. No matter. I already have him under my power. Danzo smirked and tried to activate the dormant gain jutsu that he had put on him. Naruto pretended to get glassy-eyed and bowed to Danzo. Yes Lord Danzo. I am your tool to use as you see fit. Danzo smirked even wider until he felt an excruciating pain at his side. He looked over to find that his arms were gone. H-H-H-H-H. What have you done boy? You were under my power. Yeah right you old fart. Like I could be caught off guard by you. 
I think it's time to end this little game of trying to take over the leaf village that you have started. Anzo began to scream even louder as Naruto ripped out the Sharingani that was covered up. He knew that without it, Danzo really couldn't do anything. Naruto quickly and without the use of hand seals burned him to a crisp with a large flame dragon. The root shinobi, who were dealing with Naruto's clones at the time, froze at the sight of their now deceased leader, allowing the clones to kill most of them. Just to be sure that none could escape, Naruto unleashed all of his killing intent upon the base, but made sure only those in the base could feel it. To everyone in the base, it felt as if there was a giant stomping down on their chests. They were rendered immobile by the excruciating pain brought on by the overwhelming pressure. He then made 1,000 clones to run along the entire base to gather any useful materials that he could use. What he found didn't shock him that much, considering he had known for quite some time just how sick and twisted Danzo was. He had intended to capture many Kanoichi while out on higher ranked missions and use them for breeding the new generation of Root. He was sickened at just how cruel that one-eyed monster had been and extremely glad that he was able to stop that plan before it even began. He gave the clones new orders to spread out along the base evenly to rid the village of this evil once and for all. Naruto also found some plans that were linked to Orochimaru, which detailed plans for an invasion of Konoha during the Chunin exams. He wanted to go straight to the Hokage with this, but knew he would be discovered if he didn't play it safe for now. With all of the research materials in hand, including the details of a certain curse mark, he was more than ready to leave. He hurried to the entrance of that horrible place and sealed it to ensure no one could ever find it. With a single thought to all of the clones, they exploded, destroying the entire base. Luckily for him, it was located in the farthest training ground outside of the village, so no one felt the vibrations. He smiled a true smile at the thought of a major evil being purged from the world on that day. Then flashback. Anyway, back to the present, he was currently walking towards the Hokage Tower for the team's first C-ranked mission. He knew that his teammates were at the breaking points of their annoyance with the lousy D-ranks, so one of them would likely beg for a better mission. He would have to leave personally so that he could see the world with his own two eyes and needed to map out several places himself for certain locations for his future plans. He reached the Hokage Tower via Horation, shocking his teammates and even the Anbu hidden around the room. Hello Hokage-sama. I have come for our daily mission. Ah yes Naruto. So what would you like? We have cleaning the Inuzuka dog kennels, grocery shopping for a civilian elder, capturing the Daimyo's cat. Before he could continue, a voice that could make even a tailed beast wince at the volume and shrillness spoke up. No. I've had enough of these stupid missions. They're completely useless, so give you a something better. To say that the rest of the room was shocked was an understatement. Naruto was equally shocked. He had suspected that they would just get on their knees and beg for a higher rank mission. She had just demanded something from the leader of their village. Some of the Anbu tensed and were prepared to kill her for her insults. Luckily for her, before they could make their move, Naruto already had his blade at her throat. You may ask why this is lucky. The answer is that those Anbu were going to kill her without the signal from the Hokage, which was their right. It is the code to allow insult to their Hokage be punishable by death without his express consent, so in stepping in, he had just saved her life. Hokage-sama, would you like me to execute her for her insolence at this time, or should she be taken to the T&I department for questionable loyalty to the village? He asked this with a hopeful voice, as time with Anko could snap her out of her fangirl ways. Or it could drive her completely insane. Either way it was still a win-win situation for him. That won't be necessary Naruto-san. She is still a necessary member of Team 7, so I will pardon her rude actions. This time, at least. Naruto let go of her and shoved her towards his sensei with a little more force than necessary while frowning. Now, I will get on to the issue of giving you all a more difficult mission. I believe that I will give you one, mainly as a test to see how far you all have progressed. I will expect a report of their individual performances along the course of the mission Kakashi, and I am appointing Naruto as the secondary leader in the very unlikely event that something will happen to him. Both Sasuke and Sakura were furious about that and were about to protest when Naruto released some light Kai on them. Well, it was light for him anyway. They on the other hand looked just about ready to pee themselves. Sakura might have had he not released it as quickly as it came. They fell to the floor panting after he released it and knew that they had no chance to do anything against him at the moment. The Hokage continued, not paying attention to the panting genin on the floor. As I was saying, your mission is to escort the bridge builder to Zuna to the land of waves. It is a two to four week mission, but is C-ranked due to the only risks being bandits and wild animals. Iruka, would you send in the client to Zuna please? While Iruka walked out into the hallway to retrieve the client, Sakura was looking at her blonde-haired teammate, very afraid of what he might do to her. Her mother had wanted her to seduce the boy when she learned of his heritage, but he had shot down all of her advances more quickly than she had once done to him. 
Speaking of his heritage, many of the clans and civilian council members had tried to set up arranged marriages with him. For the clans that had been kind to him, he politely declined, saying that he didn't want to be in a loveless relationship, to which they accepted and respected, as for the civilians that offered them, he completely ignored. That pissed them off really badly. He laughed in the face of Sakiri when she offered him a marriage contract to Sakura. So Sakura was still being cold towards him because her mother told her to be. Apparently, she had told her to stay loyal only to the Achiha, since she couldn't get a contract with me. Way to go Sakura. Listen to your mother about everything and have absolutely no free will of your own. An old man that smelled like a brewery walked in, disrupting him from his thoughts. So these brats are supposed to protect a super bridge builder like me? The blonde kid is the only one that looks like he can handle himself. The girl looks like she would run at the first sign of trouble, and the kid with a duck-ass hairdo over there looks like he's going to start cutting himself at any second. Sakura tried to lunge at the man, but Kakashi held her back. Sasuke was seething that someone would show him disrespect. Naruto was chuckling at the old man's comment and decided to ease his worries since Kakashi was busy. Don't worry old man. Kakashi-sensei here is a jounin, and I will make sure that no harm comes to you no matter what. That did seem to ease the old man's fears slightly, but he was still tense, something both Kakashi and Naruto picked up on. Alright then, I'll trust you on that kid. Meet me at the gate in three hours. The sooner we leave, the sooner I can get home. They were dismissed to gather the necessary materials for a long mission away from home. Naruto just went to the training grounds to practice a new move he had created. It was a move that combined his lava and steel release with his earth-style jutsu and chakra chain's bloodline, which he discovered on accident when trying to use yin yang release. He created a wide chasm using his earth jutsu, created a huge steel cage laced with chakra around the pit that prevented the use of jutsu or wall walking, and finished it off by quickly filling the pit with lava that also produced a highly toxic gas. He simply called the move, Chasm of the Damned, a very fitting name for such a large-scale destructive jutsu. It would be perfect for quickly taking care of bandit camps after any valuables and hostages were removed. He finished up perfecting the technique and left for the gate two hours later. He took the rooftops to avoid the stupid civilians sucking up to him. He didn't have to worry about packing, seeing as he already had everything on storage seals placed on his arms and legs. If there was one thing he had wrong about Sasuke, it was that fangirls really don't deserve to be acknowledged in any way. For once, he was slightly sympathetic of him having to go through dealing with the stalkers. For once, they had common ground on something. It had taken the rest of the team another hour to get there, and they were already walking along with Tazuna. What are you doing idiot? Why aren't you packed properly? We're going to be gone for M-O-N-T-H, and you don't even have anything. It would seem that being a fangirl destroyed brain cells as well. He nearly killed her twice, and she didn't even show concern about him doing it again. What a moron he thought tiredly. He calmly spoke back, completely ignoring her harsh tone. Bruno san all of my materials for this trip are located in my storage seals on my arms. I don't know about you, but I don't want a bulky bag to get in my way if we are forced to fight. You on the other hand don't seem to mind. Oh well. If you die, then it's not my fault. You should have just focused more on basic training. The carefree way that he spoke was unnerving to all those present, even to the Chunin Gate guards and Kakashi. He spoke as if a fly were being squashed, not a comrade dying. Then again, Kakashi had noticed he completely gave up on teamwork with them, due to absolutely no effort on their part, and he really couldn't blame him. He tried to make them do team building exercises to improve on it, but Naruto was the only one who ever participated with him. Sasuke would say that he was too good to work with anyone else, and Sakura would just ignore him to stare at the Achiha. It wasn't a total waste though. Kakashi and Naruto had gotten used to each other's fighting styles and had even created a few combination moves. Kakashi Sharingan would cast Gain Jutsu on the opponent, while Naruto was busy distracting them with a barrage of elemental ninjutsu. They would then both move in for the kill after they were in the Gain Jutsu. All in all, it was a simple yet effective strategy. The group left the village gates to start their mission at a slow pace. They could have moved faster, but both Tazuna and Sakura were completely against being carried through the trees on the backs of Naruto's clones. They continued to walk and were all relatively quiet. Both Naruto quickly looked at each other when they saw a puddle ahead in the road, knowing that it was a gain jutsu. They continued to walk past the puddle, trying to act like they didn't notice the blatantly obvious disguise. It hadn't rained in weeks in the area, but there were two big puddles in the road. It was so sad that neither of the other two genin could spot something so simple. All of a sudden, a spike chain pops up out of the puddle and wrapped itself around Kakashi. The two figures who also rose up pulled on the chain, effectively turning him into a pile of flesh. Sakura screamed, Sasuke froze up immediately, and Naruto was bored out of his mind and disappointed. He recognized the two from the bingo book. 
They were the Demon Brothers, missing Nin from the Hidden Mist Village. They were only C-rank Chunins though, so they were not much of a threat to him. While the other two were just standing around, he created an earth barrier around Tizuna and made 20 clones. They all charged at the surprise Chunin, fighting with many different styles. They were quickly taken down due to the superior numbers, so he tied them up using his own chakra chains. You can come down now Kakashi Sensei. I know that you're there. That was very well done Naruto. I just wanted to see how you would all act in that kind of situation. You protected the client and defeated the enemy at the same time. Sakura, Sasuke, I must say that I am very disappointed in you too. You froze up back there, which could have gotten you killed if Naruto weren't here. Sasuke was seething while Sakura was also mad that someone was insulting Sasuke. Now, I have to get information from these two about just why they are here. Wait sensei. Can I do that this time? I want some experience in interrogation since it goes into what field I will be going into in the future. Bakashi looked skeptical at first, but then remembered that this kid wasn't normal by any standards. He often wondered what went on inside of the head of his sensei's son. He I smiled at Naruto after a while, sure that he could handle it. Alright then, just try to make it quick. Naruto smiled sadistically at the two bound enemy nin. He was going to have some fun with them to blow off some steam that had accumulated from being near his two teammates. For the next 10 minutes, screams of agony could be heard behind the trees he had taken them to. He calmly walked out after a while, smiling in an unnerving way at them. He was also holding the two of them by the necks, dragging them harshly behind them. Now, would you like to tell these nice people what you have just told me? Or would you like to be reacquainted with Mr. Happy? He brought out a pole with spikes on the end, and they started screaming in fear, telling them everything that they told him. They were working for a man named Gato under the airang. Well, since you two ask so nicely, I won't bring back Mr. Happy. As soon as he said this, he brought out one of his blades and decapitated both of them, shocking all present. But I don't think that I can let you live. Rod in hell you worthless scum. He sheathed his blade and brought out a storage scroll. He then sealed the heads of the two into the scroll and handed it to his sensei. He used a simple fire jutsu to get rid of the remains, after searching the bodies for supplies and valuables. He looked over to see the bewildered looks on his teammates' faces, unsure of how to respond to what just happened. You two need to grow up fast. This is the world of Shinobi. We both kill and die for our homes without hesitation. We don't question our orders, even if they may seem wrong, and we most certainly don't insult our leader in any way. He said this with a glare to Sakura, making her shrink back in fear. You also have some explaining to do old man. This was a simple C-ranked mission, and any other genin team would have been killed. Azuna sighed in defeat, knowing that the boy was right. He told them all about how Gatu was financially and physically killing the island. How they had no way to provide for themselves anymore, and that the bridge will help bring more revenue back to the deprived town. Now, Tazuna-san, this mission has been upgraded to a higher rank due to these developments. It is now an A-rank mission with the involvement of Zabuza. He is an ex-member of the Seven Swordsmen of the Hidden Mist Village, and is also a master of the silent killing technique. Genin don't stand a chance against him, and even most Jounin would lose. That is why we will be continuing the mission. Everyone looked at him like he was crazy. What kind of logic was he using? I know that you don't understand my reasoning, but I said normal Jounin. Kakashi is supposedly the strongest, other than the Hokage, in the entire Leaf Village. I was able to defeat him on my own, so I know we will be fine. The old man was astonished that a little kid was able to beat someone who was so much more experienced than himself and now respected the boy much more. Thank you. You have no idea how much this means to me. Knowing that my home will be safe and prosperous once more is a huge burden off my shoulders, said a now ecstatic Tazuna. Bakashi, who had remained silent throughout the conversation, decided to speak up right now. Naruto, as good as we are, there still might be some problems with us continuing on this mission. I think that it's great that you want to help these people, but we should still be cautious. I'm going to send back a message to get back up, just in case Gatu decides to hire more than just what the Demon Brothers knew about. Naruto nodded his head, thinking of how this would affect how much power he could show. Alright team, let's continue on for now. We still have a lot of ground to cover. And with that, they continued on their way to reach the Land of Waves. Little did they know is that all of this was a part of Naruto's plan. He smirked when he was sure that they couldn't see him. Phase 2 has begun. The end. So how was this part, I hope you like it. And if you like it share this part with your friends and like the video too. And don't forget to subscribe our channel for daily awesome fanfiction. Okay it's time for me to go. Bye bye.